You've spoken this weekend about feeling unfairly treated and scrutinised by the rest of the world. What do you mean by that? Look, I think it's... Uh... I think looking at a situation from one perspective is easy to do, and uh, everyone um, is is free to look at things that they that they want to see the way they want to see it. I think when we when we say unfairly treated is basically not looking at uh, situations in context, not looking at the immense amount of uh, progress that has happened to date. And obviously here we're talking about workers' welfare in in Qatar. Uh, Qatar has been a trailblazer in improving workers' rights, improving workers' uh, standards of living, uh, introducing of minimum wage, um, abolishing the kafala system, um, um, you know, working hard. I know that the Supreme Committee has been working hard for all workers on the construction sites to make sure that their workers do not pay recruitment fees in their sending from the sending countries. Um, the Supreme Committee has reimbursed many of the workers that have been able to prove that they've uh, paid unfair recruitment fees back in their countries. As someone who is trying to stage a football tournament, how do you feel about repeatedly facing these questions? You know, the World Cup is, uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a global event. It puts countries um, in the spotlight. And I know that a lot of entities, you know, use it as, a, as an opportunity. Uh, and it's something that the government and the country has expected. Um, the, fer the ferocity of it is what hasn't been expected. It's, it's been a ferocious uh, um, 10 years um, of, you know, fighting back, trying to, um, you know, put clarity out there to make, making sure that the story comes out across. Um, but this is the reality of, of the situation here. I mean, a lot of people listen, a lot of people um, come to Qatar to see the facts for themselves. Unfortunately, a lot of entities that do put out these reports, don't even bother coming here and uh, seeing things for themselves. We know that of the teams that have qualified, already some have made statements around the importance of human rights. Uh, we've been speaking to the head of the Danish FA, who I think has been in contact with yourselves, about how receptive the organisers of the tournament will be to players and teams wanting to make a point about human rights. Again, I mean, this is um, obviously anybody who wants to take a position on whichever topic is their personal right. And uh, what we've been engaging with uh, different federations, uh, the Nordic, the um, a lot of uh, FAs in, in Europe and elsewhere, um, invited them to see things uh, for themselves, to look at the progress that's been made over the 10 years. Uh, many of them recognize the progress, are quite happy to see the amount of progress that's been made over the past 10 years. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's their position, it's their right to have these positions. And uh, the important thing for them is to take these positions with full information um, and, and information that we're able to show them and share with them. And I think that's what's important for us, is not to take a position based on, um, on, on the news. Have the English FA been in part of those discussions with yourselves now that Gareth Southgate and his team have qualified? Um, I think the English FA has been an FA that we've been engaging with for a very long time. Uh, the Supreme Committee, um, the Qatar Football Association has been you know, in frequent engagement with the English FA. And congratulations on qualifying. And we know fans want to come and enjoy the World Cup and in many cultures that involves alcohol. What is the the message that you would have for fans who want to come and drink alcohol in Qatar and also those fans who will do it perhaps away from the designated areas where you would like them to drink? Look, first of all, what I want to say is, is alcohol is legal and available in Qatar. It might not be as readily available as other parts of the world where alcohol is, is um, an integral part of, of culture. Um, however, we are a hospitable country and hospitable people and we respect other cultures and, and uh, you know, we are um, making it more available in, in, in designated areas that fans want to go to. It's available in hotels. Uh, we are confident that this will not be an issue as, as you know, as people perceive it to be. We, we know that football fans, particularly in Europe and particularly in some other parts of the world, do get carried away and do really enjoy themselves and get sometimes very drunk. 
how much do those fans need to bear in mind the place where they are for this World Cup? Generally, what I've seen from fans traveling to World Cups is that they're quite uh, um, respectful to cultures. Um, That's not always the case, NASA. What I've been to the past previous three World Cups, and I can tell you that what, what I've seen is um, fans are generally um, in joyous moods. They're always supporting their teams. They get, they get a little bit rowdy, but nothing that I've seen that goes uh, beyond that, to be honest with you. Uh, so uh, there's there's nothing to worry about. I know that there's uh, um, plans in place to make sure that people really have an enjoyable time, whatever it is um, um, that fans like to do. It's uh, it. We just need to make sure that it's within the parameters of what's uh, what's legal and what's safe. Uh, their safety and the security is paramount. The everybody's welcome slogan is one that is is well known now around Qatar 2022. Um, what do you say to fans that, and we've speak, spoken to some fans from LGBTQ plus groups who say that they just don't want to travel because they don't want to go to a country where their sexuality is against the law? Look, what we want to say is, uh, first of all, that everyone wel everyone's welcome is not a slogan. It's, it's, it's a fact. Everybody is welcome. We, we're uh, not making any differentiation based on race, gender, orientation, religion. Everybody's welcome. 